I understand taking tests aren't fun. Too bad. GEPA, ACES, PSSA, CAT, FCAT, BAT, SSS, ITBS, PLAN, and JASK. These are but a few of many standardized tests that students are subjected to every year. The concept of standardized testing was first introduced in the United States in World War I. These standardized tests were used to determine which soldiers were officer worthy. Since then, the concept of standardized testing has transformed to a means of measuring success in schools. This success also determines which schools receive government funding and how much. The President's nearly $48 billion education plan includes testing children annually to more closely monitor reading and math skills, rewarding schools where grades improve and punishing failing schools by cutting federal money to districts that don't show progress, and allowing parents of children in public schools that fail three years in a row to use tax dollars, government vouchers, to move their children to private schools. We will end what has become a race to the bottom in our schools and instead spur a race to the top. It's a national competition among states to improve our schools. We laid out a few key criteria and said if you meet these tests, we'll reward you by helping you reform your schools. Despite using them for several decades, policymakers and educators do not yet know how to use test-based incentives to consistently generate positive effects on achievement and to improve education. So is standardized testing a useful and productive means of evaluating student performance? What happens when you treat education like a business? What are the effects on the student's education and learning? Is this method of funding schools productive? Is it fair? I'm a student teaching in uh, Clearfield Elementary School right now, and we are very strict curriculum based on the standardized testing. We're doing um, the Treasures curriculum and the Everyday Math curriculum, which is, you know, pretty much teaching to the test. I do not think that they're very accurate because of the fact that they are taken by all kinds of students, the honor students, the level three students, and also students that aren't fully capable of taking them by themselves. And I think that they're not always an accurate representation of what you've learned throughout your high school career just because of the fact that teachers feel as though they're teaching to the test. And teaching to the test is never a good idea because there's so many other tests and other subjects that you should be learning at the time. And standardized tests in a way get in the way of that. In 2007, the National Center on Education Policy reported that since 2001, 44% of school districts have reduced the time spent on science, social studies, and the arts by an average of 145 minutes per week in order to focus on reading and math. Contrary to popular assumptions about standardized testing, the tests do a poor job of measuring student achievement. They fail to measure important attributes such as creativity and critical thinking skills. Studies indicate that standardized tests reward superficial thinking and may discourage more analytical thinking. Additionally, because of the small sample of knowledge that is tested, standardized tests provide a very incomplete picture of student achievement. So if standardized tests discourage analytical thinking and do a poor job of measuring student achievement, why are they still being used in today's schools? Well, some policymakers believe that standardized tests are necessary for determining which schools will receive government funding. The pressure on the schools to get that money is just out of this world. Unfortunately, the competition for funding has gotten so intense that in 2011, a widespread cheating conspiracy was uncovered by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, in which teachers and principals felt that they had to cheat in order to keep their jobs. Because of this, as well as many other incidents, many feel as though no child left behind and race at the top are corrupting the American education system as a whole. In order to receive funding, schools must make adequate yearly progress, or AYP. This means that the school's standardized test scores must improve each consecutive year.
some districts that are more higher income and educate a lot of kids that are coming from a lot of privilege, um, having funding connected to their standardized test scores is a very positive thing, right? Because it can it can supplement the resources they already have. It um, allows their teachers to have a lot of technology and be able to maneuver a lot of different ways to teach. Um, but then also, when you talk about kids from maybe lower, lower income environments, oftentimes those standardized test scores are a reflection of how much, you know, well, No Child Left Behind can kind of punish you in saying if you don't achieve AYP for a certain amount of time, right, your funding, Title I funding can be taken away or that's how the federal government sort of punishes you. And for me, that creates a larger inequality between those students that have less resources be get less and less resources, right? And those that have more resources tend to get more and more. So it can create a larger divide. A recent Gallup poll shows that the majority of Americans do not believe that a single test will provide a fair picture of whether or not a school needs improvement. In 2006, only 28% of surveyed Americans responded yes. While the standardized testing system is being overhauled, we question whether simply changing the method of testing will actually help solve the underlying problems associated with standardized testing, including the narrowing of curricula, the inaccurate measuring of student learning, and the unjust funding to schools. As an educator, as a teacher, I tend to be like, I tend to dismiss it. I don't like it as a, as a like you're, because testing is so narrow in what you're looking at and research over and over and over again basically states that it has no measure for how effective a teacher is and for the most part doesn't affect what students learn either or like doesn't measure what students learn so um, but it can be used in different ways like I talked about in those other two ways so it's just a complex picture for me.